Hello, hello. What's going on? This is me, Jay Renard, here with a little bit of quarantine content. I don't know what we're going to call this, the, uh, the quarantine blogs or the quarantine tips, even though they don't have any damn thing to do with getting or staying healthy. Um, but I got a little something for everybody. Um, and it's something that I could have done a while ago, but I wasn't really into being on camera much except for my hands for obvious reasons. Um, but it's uh, some, some material that I actually like working with a lot and that material is Stingray. This is a piece Stingray had right here. Let me get this a little bit closer. Boom. And it's very much akin to a very, very tiny cobblestone road. So what this hide is on the underside, it's the, uh, the flesh side of the animal, but on the top side here, all these that you see are little calcium nodules. In all honesty, they're basically little bumps of bone. And that's what makes Stingray such an interesting hide to work with, or, or rather interesting hide to have as a, uh, as a material that you've had some accessories and whatnot made with. It is very, very resistant to scratches. I mean, truthfully, unless you take a sander to this or something incredibly hard or abrasive, nothing's really gonna happen to your Stingray hide. So uh, what I decided to do was uh, to take this, which is an abandoned, uh, vertical wallet project that I had from a while ago and I decided to use some of this hide as an accent for this mask that I'm going to be making. So here's the main pieces of the mask here, the left side, right side, center piece, and they come with tabs on the side for a string or a leather piece or whatnot to go for the closure and what and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add or really make an onlay is the proper term here that'll go down and stop around this point I'm gonna make that stingray and I'm gonna make the tabs here stingray so the purpose of this video is not to just film the process of this mask getting made because truthfully I've already started. The purpose of this is to show people exactly what goes into cutting Stingray and keeping it all nice and clean. Basically show some of the production process so that they understand the price behind Stingray materials. Because this stuff, it's not cheap to purchase and the uh, the items made from Stingray are also not cheap. And it's not just because it's exotic and just because it's durable, it's because the production process is actually far from easy, far from quick. So I'm gonna show some of it. So these are normally what get used to cut most of my leather. If it's something maybe three and a half ounces thick and less. I'll use this set of shears here. Not very large, as you can see, not very thick. For larger items, I'm using this one. And this one you can see is much sturdier, a lot, lot beefier. And what this one has, it's a little difficult to see. I'll try to get the uh, the camera zoomed in properly for it there are these ridges on one side of the hide excuse me one side of the uh, the scissor blades and the other side is smooth so the ridges are to keep things in place on a thicker hide which you need otherwise if you have two smooth pieces as they cut the piece will move forward out of the blade so the cutting process is terribly slow for something thinner not an issue 
for something thicker, you do need some uh, some portion of the mechanism to keep everything steady while you're cutting. For this here, this is a this is a factor, or this has a factor to it that is requiring of a specialty tool. So I've got two of them. One of them is here. The other. I haven't completely rearranged everything. Oh man. Professionalism at its finest, right? Here we go. That's the other one. This is actually what I started with. So to cut Stingray properly, if you don't have a uh, clicker press, and some uh, some dies specifically that you're going to use for this. You're going to have to use metal cutting shears. I got these first because I went to the hardware store and asked for them, and this is what they had. They work really well. However, they're not very precise for what I needed to do. This is better for cutting just large straight pieces. And then when I was at the uh, the store, Tokyo Hands, not sponsored. I saw that they had these very small metal cutting shears. Again, with the, it's not the easiest to see, but you can hear them. It's got ridges on the bottom also. So you're gonna need these tools, uh, uh, one of these tools, preferably something smaller, to cut Stingray. So, I'm going to do this for the sake of demonstration, but please don't do this normally. You can hear these bursting. All right, that worked a bit here because of how small these nubs are, but I don't know if you could tell how much force I was putting into it. Not ideal and certainly not precise. These ones, they look smaller, but I promise you, this metal is harder, it's a little thicker, and it's definitely made, it's hardened to withstand this. So what I'm gonna do is, I've already traced out the portion for the pattern, so I'm just gonna cut along that. So what I'm gonna do is cut a little wider, because on top of the metal cutting shears that you need, I'm gonna have to use a Dremel tool to sand this down properly. This, this stuff does not cut like regular leather. I have to cut through these calcium nodules. It's also why you don't wanna use a blade, a regular cutting blade on Stingray you are going to chip it up. All right, so there's that. So this is going to lay on top of this, like so. And also what I'm going to do is, prior to the stitching, I'm going to glue this down and then use these holes that are already punched as a guide for the hole punch again for these. Now I'm cutting out the tabs that I had mentioned earlier for securing the mask. <gasps> Check. 
change my angle here. I'm starting to hurt my neck just staring down. So you can't tell. Well, maybe you can because the angle of my arms, but I'm sitting down now. tell I'm not gonna enjoy this or maybe maybe it isn't so terrible All right, there's the easy stuff. The more fun stuff is gonna have to wait until later. It is currently 1.07 a.m. And I really, really don't wanna piss my neighbors off by running a Dremel tool in the middle of the night. That would be very not neighborly. And that would also be me being a bad ambassador to America by being so rude so what I'm gonna do is wrap up this little blog vlog update who knows and we're gonna call that good thanks for letting me take up some of your time I appreciate it um, See you uh, later on after this is all nice and stitched up. Jerenard out.